champions from the Sleeper Wire Fantasy Football Show will help you win your fantasy football championship. Sleeper Wire, Friday, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern. Sleeper Wire on Dash Talk. Welcome everybody to the Sleeper Wire Show. Yeah. Ow. I know you guys are listening to my sultry voice right now, and you know what time it is. It's time to talk some fantasy football today. And, I, and I'm your host, Nick Summerall, because I don't do this alone. I'm going to introduce you to two fine-ass co-hosts. I got Prophet Hoos. That's right. That's right. You don't do this alone. That's that's why. <laughs> All right. And I got Professor Chris joining us today. It has been a long time since someone's uh, said I had a fine ass, so thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Well, there you go. You know, oh, I, I, I thought I said it was cute. You know, just recently. Sorry about that, Chris. <laughs> I think he just wanted to hear it from me. That's what he meant. Like, you know, oh, okay. he, he meant he wanted to hear it from Nick Sumrall, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, today, you know, I know you've been getting treated to a lot of mock draft episodes, but this is not that the case today because most of you may have done your draft over the weekend or a lot of you have your draft coming up this week. It's a big week for drafting. Uh, so we are going to deliver some drafting tips for all different kinds of formats and leagues because you got a lot of different ones these days. You know, it's not just standard. It's not just PPR. You know, there's super flex, two QB. I mean, m- multiple flexes, 16 teamers, 20 team leagues. I mean, it's uh, it- it's incredible all the different types of leagues you got out there. And, you know, we're going to try and – tackle some of these uh, leagues and give you some scenarios of how to handle them. But before we get into that, we've got a lot of news to cover. I mean, week three preseason games were this past weekend and all of last week, so uh, a lot of things to cover there, guys. Are you guys ready? Are you excited? Let's do oh, it. Oh, man, how can we not be? Woo! Woo! All right. Let's get into it. Let's get to the hot topics of this week. So starting us off, guys, we have a lot of injuries to cover. So my first injury I want to cover is Julian Edelman. Tore his ACL in last week's preseason game. Will be out for the whole season. Oh. Yeah. Eesh. I mean, ah. that, yeah, that, well, there was a lot of tearing going on over the weekend, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, but this is this, this one. I, I want to start with this one because, you know, um, the Patriots – You know, this isn't really too damaging to their offense, in my opinion. I mean, yes, it's one of Brady's favorite weapons out there, so that does hurt a little bit. But, I mean, it's not like he loses all of his weapons, not like another team we're going to talk about later. Um, But uh, this, this, uh, the the question here is, who gets the targets now that Edelman is down? Uh, Hoos, why don't I start with you on this one? Well, I mean, it's a a complex question, but... I think, um, well, I, I I will say that Malcolm Mitchell is Julian um, Julian Edelman's direct backup, but that really doesn't mean anything because it's the Patriots. So, I mean, you already have Dan, uh, of Dan, Danny Amendola as a third receiver, so he's probably going to get some more looks. Uh, Chris Hogan is an obvious one, you know. Um, I think Chris Hogan. Um, it's a lot of hype around him right now. Uh, he, I, I don't think that, that you're going to be able to get these numbers, you know, on, on a weekly basis. I think, you know, some weeks he's going to bust for you. Uh, so I see him kind of as a flex. I think, I think the safest guy to, re, you know, replace him is, is obviously cooks gets, gets a huge bump. Um, he's, he's a little bit more safer. Um, and Gronk is, you know, obviously going to be, you know, Gronk, but you know he's he you know you feel a little bit better you know about drafting these guys. Yeah, you know, I mean it's interesting you bring up Danny Amendola because there's been a lot of talk about and hype for Chris Hogan 
as of late. Um, so, but, but Chris, uh, what about you? I mean, do you think that who's onto, onto something here or do you feel differently about who's going to be getting the targets there? Like, is it, is there, is it just going to be spread around or is there somebody who bumps up because of Edelman's injury? Well, I don't think this injury bumps up Chris Hogan. I think he's still going to play the same role that he did. But Edelman going down from last season, that's 159 targets that are now gone. So 98 catches for Edelman, 159 targets. I definitely think this bumps up Brandon Cooks a little bit. But I also think this makes Malcolm Mitchell fantasy relevant again. So I would say Amendola and Hogan and uh, Gronk, those guys aren't really going to go anywhere. Gronk was already going to get his targets. I mean, it's not like anybody not being there is going to affect that. But I think Brandon Cooks gets more targets now, and Malcolm Mitchell can step up and you know have an effect, whereas I don't think he was really going to be that much of a factor without injuries this year due to the emergence of Chris Hogan last year and the, you know, the – them bringing in Brandon Cooks. So I think it's it's Cooks and Mitchell who benefit the most. I do think that Malcolm Mitchell was going to play a red zone threat anyway. And, yeah, he's he's definitely going to get them now. Um, he was really good, you know, last year in that area. So, yeah, I definitely agree with Chris there. I, I'm surprised that n- neither one of you really mentioned the pass-catching running backs they have. Is it – is it purely because at this point the backfield has just so many question marks that you're really not sure who benefits? I mean, because to me, I feel like James White is the one who benefits the most uh, as far as the running backs are concerned uh, with Edelman's injury. Uh, I'll start with you, Hoos. Uh, I feel <laughs> – I kind of feel the same – well, not the same way you do. I just feel like the same way, you know, I feel with, with the wide receivers, you know, it's kind of gets – Gonna get spread it out, you know. Um, yeah. Some and and I think, you know, Dion uh, and uh, you know, definitely White. I think all those guys stand to benefit. So, yeah, I, uh, it's 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 definitely. So none of those options become sexier because of Edelman's injuries. What you're basically trying to say? No, I mean it's the same thing. You know, it's it, it's always you know it's always a dart throw with those guys. Okay. All right. Chris, it, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I mean, I don't even like speculating on New England running backs as is because you honestly never know who you're going to play week to week. I mean, LeGarrette Blunt with his 18 touchdowns last season, you could have had Blunt on your team and lost every single week because it just wasn't a week that he went off. Right. So I just – it's it's hard to really speculate on the running backs, but I don't think Edelman – you know, uh tearing his ACL and being out for the season really affects the running backs all that much. I mean, it might, I would say if I had to pick one that it's going to benefit, it would be James White. But I, I seriously do think it's Cooks and Mitchell who benefit the most out of this. Okay. All right, fair enough. Let's move on. We've had too much Patriots talk. Uh, yeah. Another guy who is, who is going to be out for the season now is Spencer Ware with a, a tear to his PCL and damage to his LCL. Oh, oh I mean, man. he is out, but Hoos's dream boat of the offseason is getting oh. his opportunity. Kareem Hunt. Oh. I mean, he is going. He has named the starter list to him. Hoos can't even contain himself. He might be rubbing his vagina as we speak. So, Hoos, <laughs> I'll give you the floor. <laughs> man, I, I, I'm actually crying my eyes out because this just ruins his ADP. Now I have to, you know, now I have to take him in the fourth round. You know, in at least, at least, yeah. You know, I, you know, I was, uh, you know, it's talking to uh, Jake Silly on, on on Twitter. He said second round. I was like, dude, what are you doing? Like, be quiet. Like, what are you <laughs> doing? Do me. You're trying to kill me. Um, yeah, so, I mean, yes, I, I love Kareem Hump. You know, I've been talking about him all off season. you know, since like, you know, like March or April. Uh, but, yeah, great opportunity. You know, I thought that he was already going to have this opportunity. I was taking him in the fifth round before, um, you know, before the injury. And people were like, hey, what are you doing? You know, you got Ingram out there. You got other guys. And I was just like, no, man, this, this is the guy. Um, and, and now I got to take him, you know, possibly in a fourth, third, you know, and, uh, you know, if I want him, you know, and I, I, I try to think rational, you know, you know, when I'm playing fantasy football. So I don't know. I, he might not end up on my team. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that saddens me. 
Yeah, he's already in just the last couple of days. Seven. His yeah. ADP has crept up uh, into the fourth round, and I expect that's going to go up to the early third. <sighs> yeah, yeah, probably it's like, disappointing. Uh, probably like in the Dalvin Cook kind of range, which is high, but. I mean, you know, I understand that you're not getting him for the extreme value now that he was going at, but it at least alleviates the question marks about when Kareem Hunt will start and take over that job. I didn't have those there. questions, you know, at least for me. I, I thought day one, he's going to take the job. He's the best guy there. They moved up in the draft to get him. I mean, he's he's their guy, you know, and now everyone knows. So it's this this... This news breaks my heart as a fantasy owner, you know, because this is one of my guys that I was, you know, trying to get him on all of my teams and I have him on pretty much all of my teams. So I guess I can't be greedy, you know, even though I might have to be and, and, and take him anyway. Because uh, well, the biggest I, bullshit I like artist over much. here, he's crying that he's not going to get Kareem Hunt, <laughs> but he already has Kareem Hunt. Shame <laughs> well, on you. Hey, Shame there's, on there's, you. there's other leagues out there. You know, you know, before the happen, you know, drafts, you know, they went I down. Did, I, I did. I did last night a two QB league and I'm pretty proud of myself. I got uh, Kareem Hunt, I think, in the sixth round as my yeah. RB2 behind Melvin Gordon. So uh, I'm, I'm looking pretty fine at running back position. Yes. With that. Yeah. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that. So hopefully Kareem Hunt turns into the, the workhorse that we're expecting of him. But, guys, listen, if you're looking for Kareem Hunt, yeah, I mean, expect to try. I, I would be – I'm not going to reach in the second round. If somebody's taking him there, fine, whatever. I'm not going to cry about it because second round, I, I'm i sorry, but I'll pass. I won't take him in the second. If he's there in the mid-third, that's where I start to really think about it. You know, but if he, you know, if he goes, he goes. That's the way I'm looking at him at this point. I want him on my teams, but – I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pay the ultimate price for him. Uh, you know, fourth round is is absolutely for me still a steal for somebody who can be a workhorse back uh, carrying the full load for Kansas City in that situation there. So, guys, let's move along because uh, unfortunately I might cry because <laughs> the Bears once again are cursed. Oh. With injuries galore. I mean, it's it's just unbelievable. Last year, we had 19 players on injured reserve. This year, we're already we're already starting the list, and Cameron Meredith is at the top. Torres ACL out for the season, oh. and has probably even more damage. I mean, it was a nasty, nasty hit. Yeah, I, I am not pleased at that all. That looked bad. Yeah, that looked bad. It looked really bad. And he was it starting was. off well. He had two catches for 44 yards in that preseason game. He was looking good with Glennon, which is not something you'll hear me say a lot. Look good with Glennon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he's out now. And, um, boy, that receiving core. I mean, it was already bad before, but now it's just it's even worse. So my question to you guys, and I'll start with Chris on this one, um, is there any receiver there? That you know you can find any value in at this point, uh, even if it's late in drafts. I mean, the only guy I would consider having on any of my teams would be Kevin White, and that's if I can get him in the last round. But I mean, you got after Meredith, you have Kevin White, Victor Cruz, Marcus Wheaton, Kendall Wright. I mean, that's not a spectacular receiving core. I do think this means Victor Cruz is probably going to make the team because I did hear some talk about him not even making the 53 man roster. So I think he steps up and moves into uh, across from Kevin White, taking over Meredith's role. Marcus Wheaton is still going to stay as the third wide receiver. Kendall Wright, maybe get some more work. But if I, if I absolutely had to choose one, it would be taking a chance on Kevin White for the third year in a row. But I'm not excited about any of these guys by any means. I'm going to be playing the hoosh role here because I've got a deep, deep sleeper for everybody to keep their eyes on. That's Tanner Gentry, undrafted free agent out of Wyoming, I believe. I think I I might be wrong, but I'll have to double check. Um, But out of Wyoming, he's looked great. 
Um, you know, even though he's been playing, you know, with third, third string and second string, he hasn't played the first team, obviously. But I could see this guy being a guy who could step up. I mean, look, there's really not a lot of cha- lot challenging there to start over him, even in Marcus Wheaton, uh, you know, or, or, or as you said, Victor Cruz. So I, I see this guy maybe coming on later in the season if he does end up starting with the first team offense. But just keep an eye on that guy. I, I really like what I've seen out of Tanner Gentry. He's been catching everything thrown his way. But, Hoos, is there anything you'd like to add to the Bears receiving core? Uh, I Well, if I had to pick a guy, it'd probably be Kendall Wright. Um, I, I I think he's he's probably going to be the the safest guy there. You know, he's probably going to have the, the best floor. Uh, and, and might also offer you the best ceiling, you know, um, you know, we, you know, we know he had flashes, but you know, you guy that's always injured, you know, and they have a team riddle full of guys that are injured. So, I mean, the argument's going to be the same against all their wide receivers, uh, Victor Cruz, you know, Kevin White, you know, these are guys that have injured past, you know, so, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, say Kendall Wright. All right. All right. Well, so now let's look at Jeremy Hill. Jeremy Hill left this past week's preseason game with ankle injury. Not sure of the severity at this time. Uh, my question to you guys is, do we feel a little more comfortable about where Joe Mixon is being drafted now? I mean, he was already being targeted, uh, you know, end of third, early fourth round. Uh, who shall start with you on this one? Uh, I guess, but still, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're a Joe Mixon fan, then you love this. Uh, I just feel like it's a crowded backfield. They've got, you know, a bad line. You know, wh- where you're taking him, I I think right there, that's, that's that Kareem Hunt territory. Um, you know, if, if Kareem Hunt's not gone already, I guess, um, I guess Marshawn Lynch is around there, Carlos Hyde, I guess, you know, if, if you know, if, if I had to buy into him, you know, I, 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 I'm really not a fan of his situation, you know? Well, you say if you had to buy into him, are you buying into him? No, <laughs> but you know, sometimes the way drafts fall, you know, I'm looking at the way, you know, I guess in that territory, I guess I'm going to go ahead and probably reach for Doug Martin there. Um, I see Doug Martin a little bit later. In the fourth round? Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, he's fourth, fifth. In the, the, this last mock I've I've seen that was on a fancy football calculator. And this is a PPR mock. He he, he fell to the fifth round. Uh, uh, I've seen him Doug fifth. Martin. I mean, I'm just saying I've seen him in the fifth, sixth round. I've never seen anyone take him in the fourth. That's just that uh, uh, Joe Mixon. No, Doug Martin. Oh, Doug Martin. Oh, okay. That's why I'm. That's why I'm surprised you said fourth. I I wouldn't reach for him the fourth, but I mean fifth, fifth round, sure. Um, fifth, sixth. I've even seen him fall to the seventh in some some drafts, but mo- mainly fifth or sixth. You know, okay. I still don't want Joe Mixon as my RB two to start the season. And I, I love the talent. I think he is overall the best running back from this year's draft class. I liked Dalvin Cook the most, personally. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think Mixon, on pure talent all around, is definitely the best running back. But at the same time, like to reiterate, this has been said over and over again, and it's still true, Marvin Lewis doesn't play rookies. If Hill is out, maybe Mixon gets some some playing time at the beginning of the year, but he's not going to be the starter and it's still it's going to be the Giovanni Bernard role, running the ball and in the receiving game with some mix and getting sprinkled in. And then when Hill comes back, Hill's going to take the starting job again, unless Mixon just is absolutely brilliant. And it's only because of the way Marvin Lewis has always worked. Jeremy Hill is still a good short yardage guy. He's still oh, yeah. great on the goal line. Oh, yeah. It's not like he's not a a workhorse every down back like he people thought he was a few years ago. So that's that's perception of him has definitely changed as it should but fourth round for a guy who might not even start for at least half the season i was maybe six games is that's just too rich for me that's too early for that kind of guy 
And to have him as your RB2, a guy who most likely isn't going to be getting a lot of use in the fourth round, is too high. I mean, other guys in the fourth round, uh, I, I'd rather you know take Kelvin Benjamin or Crabtree or Tyreek or Kelsey oh, yeah. over Joe yeah. Mixon. Yeah, for sure. See, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I like Joe Mixon. I'm excited about his talent. I understand that there's a bit of a committee at the moment. May, you know, depending on Jeremy Hill's injury status, though, I mean, it might open up a lot for Joe Mixon to actually start the season. Um, I, I'm, but I, I'm a little torn. I don't know. I need, I need more news out of, of of what's happening with Jeremy Hill. Like how how severe is this injury to really um, make my final opinion? I guess on Joe Mixon. Yeah, I agree that the talent is 100 percent there, but at the running back position with bad offensive lines. Sometimes opportunity matters more, and I'm not sure he's going to get much of an opportunity, especially for your fourth-round pick. Right, right. All right, guys, let's go ahead to Ben McAdoo with the Giants. He said he is hopeful OBJ will play in season opener. I mean, you know, a lot lot of people can hope, but doesn't mean that it's going to actually come true. Uh, but let's let's talk about it. Do you guys think that Odo Beckham will be ready for the season opener after spraining his ankle? Uh, Chris, I'll start with you. You know, I I have sprained a lot of ankles in my day, and pretty bad ones and mild ones. And ankle sprains are a tricky thing. Now, for someone who's in as good of shape as Odo Beckham is, I think that if he had to play Week One. He could because it's, you know, it will have been a few weeks since this ankle injury. And I don't know if this is necessarily just coach speak. He said he's hopeful OBJ will play in the opener. I think everybody is hopeful that he plays because people are still having to take him in the first round of their draft. So everybody's hopeful that he's going to play. I think they would be smart to maybe give him the first week off. But, but I mean, it, it could happen that, you know, Come Saturday, the day before game time, he's full speed and he's ready to go. And then it's like it never happened. Yeah. What about you? Who's the big uh, the big G man fan? What are you thinking? Yeah, I think he's going to be out there. Um, and that's just because Odo Beckham, I think they're going to leave it up to him. And I think he's he's a competitor and he's going to play even if he's not 100 um, percent. I think he's going to play and he's going to play at about you know, 80%, which is still good enough to, you know, get you, you know, you know, some points and, you know, and uh, I think as the season goes along, you know, he's, he's going to be just fine. I think he's going to play through this and uh, you know, like, like Chris said, you know, it, it, it would have already have been a couple weeks, you know? So um, yeah, I, I, I think he'll play. Well, did you guys hear about the, uh, the laser treatments that, Odo Beckham was getting for this injured ankle. No, I didn't. Yeah, apparently uh, he got uh, there was a tweet coming out said was told o- Odo Beckham will get first in series of Phoenix Thera Lays cell treatments on ankle. This was mm. on Friday, uh, similar to what Jared Allen received before Super Bowl Fifty. Uh, they tout that its ability to offer quick relief from inflammation, reduce pain fast, and accelerate healing so i mean it, it, this this maybe is a new kind of um new healing process that maybe the, the you know the nfl or certain organizations are trying out to try and uh you know quicken the healing process of some of these injuries uh, so that's very interesting to me sounds risky the process involves delivering concentrated laser light energy energy to the cellular level of the body to reduce inflammation and accelerate the healing rate. Hmm. So, I mean, it's not really putting anything in the body. I mean, just using uh, some laser, you know, laser. It sounds like cheating, but um, whatever. <laughs> it, it sounds, sounds like, like something the Patriots would do. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it sounds very Patriots-esque. <laughs> I mean, listen, if I had a player who was suffering some kind of injury like that, that, you know, seems like, you know, it's going to be, it's not a major inner injury, something minor. If it could be healed by laser like treatments, why not? So he's going to, so he's going to go out there and be what, like Robo Beckham now? That's it. Right. His whole leg is being replaced by a oh, robotic man. leg. That's it. <laughs> awesome. 
<laughs> this is uh, awesome news. He's the Odell Beckham Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> this is great uh, for your fantasy team. All right, guys. Let's move on. Uh, so, okay. Here's something I've been hearing a lot about, like, people people always telling me when I bring up, like, names like Jeremy Macklin or, you know, even Mike Wallace or whatever. They say, well, Flacco's not even going to, you know, play. Who's their quarterback in the Ravens? Uh, actually, John Harbaugh states that Joe Flacco will be ready for the season opener. Let's talk about it. Does Flacco coming back for the season, you know, being ready for the season opener, uh, does this bring up the faith in some of the skill position players there? In Baltimore, uh, who's starting with you? Oh, yeah. I mean, 100%. I mean, this brings, you know, confidence back to all of those, you know, all of those players. Uh, uh, you know, we definitely had a lot of questions, you know, surrounding, you know, I think at one point they were saying that, that he might miss multiple weeks, you know. So um, for him to be able to say, you know, for, you know, Harbaugh to come out and, and say, I promise you, that at Joe Flacco will play in the opener. That's bold. And that's great for your fantasy teams. That's great for all these players that you're drafting, you know, uh, and, and, and especially if the news came out beforehand and, you know, you're kind of fading those players, you know, you probably got them at a better value. Uh, so, you know, if, if, if no one's paying attention, you know, to the past couple hours, you know, the past day, you know, of the news, then, you know, and you're drafting the night, then you know, take advantage. Definitely take advantage. Chris, who's who's the receiver of this receiving core that benefits the most with Flacco's return? I think it's definitely Jeremy Macklin, a guy that you can right now get in the eighth round and who can regularly put up high wide receiver two, low wide receiver one numbers. And the the Ravens are a passing team. Flacco threw the second most pass attempts in the NFL last season, only right. throwing one fewer than Drew Brees. I mean, they throw the ball. Steve Smith was great there when you know when he was in the game. He he had some uh, injury issues, but Steve Smith was great. Jeremy Macklin, I think, is going to have a huge year, and I think he's a steal at eight. It hasn't really. This news didn't really change anything for me because I never really worried about Flacco missing time in the first place. Uh, but but you know this. For other people, this might reaffirm things. This is great for Jeremy Macklin. I think this is good for Mike Wallace, too. Yeah, I do like Mike Wallace, sure. who finishes as a wide receiver, too, every single year. And he's getting drafted super late. I'm looking at the uh, ADPs on Fantasy Football Calculator right now. And I am not going even... 13th, oh, 13th yeah. round. 13th round, are you looking at standard? I'm looking at a 12-team PPR, and he's going yeah, in, PPR. The, uh, in the 12th. Okay, yeah, I'm I'm looking at um I guess like the latest mock, and it's showing like he's going at the beginning of the 13th. So oh, okay, so I might just be looking at yeah. slightly different things. Yeah. But you're getting a wide receiver, a guy who regularly Great. finishes as a wide receiver too. Great every single year in that round. So I I think they're both going to have good seasons. I'm really excited about Macklin this year. You see, that's who I like the most there too. I mean, Mike Wallace, okay, yeah, sure. I mean, he's there. Obviously, their second receiver there. But, you know, what what concerns me, though, is Flacco missing all this time in camp and preseason games. He didn't get to work on that connection with Jeremy Macklin. It's right. the only thing that really concerns me there. And he might – I'm curious if he'll throw to Mike Wallace maybe more, more so just because he has that connection from last season uh, and only to build upon. For this I actually agree with that uh, wholeheartedly, and I think he has a better value. Um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely finding myself with more Mike Wallace shares than Macklin shares, um, mm-hmm. and yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with that. That that's a great point. Yeah, so uh, you know, I, I'm just you know at this point, if I can get Mike Wallace late, great. I'm not reaching for Macklin. That's the way I look at it. No, but I'd still take Macklin in the eighth. I don't think that's a reach at all. No, I mean, yeah, it definitely depends on what's there. An eighth round is more the time where I like to take my quarterback, though. I mean, that's that's just the round that I usually target him. But, all right, guys, a couple more things before we wrap up the news. Uh, you know, so Demarius Thomas left Saturday's preseason game with a groin injury. The severity of the injury at this point is unknown at this time. Um you know, 
Demarius Thomas is the guy I was fading anyways due to the Broncos quarterback situation. Now, though, I mean, I, I definitely don't want to touch Demarius Thomas at all, especially at his current ADP. Chris, what are your thoughts on Demarius Thomas? I mean, groin injuries are something that can keep wide receivers out of games multiple weeks in a row. We saw that with Macklin last year dealing with a groin injury. I don't know how uh, how risky they're going to be with him. I think they're going to be pretty cautious with him as he's definitely their best wide receiver. He's one of the best wide receivers in the game. And having you know Trevor Simeon throwing the ball to him, that's I don't really think it's worth risking his health just to have Simeon throw in the ball. You know, I mean, like they're not going to be a good offense anyway. But this moves him down. I mean, some guys going behind him. Uh, I'd take Alshon Jeffrey over Demarius. Uh, maybe Tyreek Hill and Crabtree. Uh, Golden Tate and the PPR. Like groin injuries are tricky, and it's something that I don't really want any part of. Yeah, um, you know that that's 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 exactly the way I feel. Um, you know, and Paxton Lynch, who's there, the backup there to Trevor Simeon, is also injured, dealing with some minor shoulder injury, but really, I mean, that's not too fantasy relevant at all, um, considering he didn't he didn't step up like the Broncos expected in preseason games or in OTAs and training camp. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they're going with Trevor Simeon this year, and I don't, yeah, I don't want Demarius Thomas or Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, you know, I, I, I know that Demarius Thomas still had a thousand yard season and same with Sand, uh, Emmanuel Sanders, but it was so all over the place and inconsistent. I didn't know when to start, uh, Emmanuel Sanders at all. And Demarius Thomas, he was, it was the same thing. So I will avoid the Broncos receiving core completely. Coos, you have any difference of opinion there? Uh, I will say Sanders is, you know, it's going to be safe. You know, um, I I think this, you know, definitely, uh, you know, Simeon liked him, you know, last year. Yeah, he had some scattered games, but he did offer, you know, about like five games where they were like wide receiver, you know, one games where, you know, he was giving you 20 something points. You know, I think one point, you know, one game he had like uh, 32. Uh, But yeah, this. uh, Yeah, I I was really in love with Thomas. uh, um. You know, yeah, I had him too. in my top 12. Uh, I, I moved him into my top 12 uh, and now I have to move him down. Uh, had guys like Diggs, you know, Macklin, you know, these guys, you know, had troubles with, you know, with those groin, you know, injuries. And, and we saw how those, you know, those injuries affected those guys, you know, especially guys like Diggs. You know, it just wasn't the same. Um, yeah, this is this is bad. <laughs> this is bad. Uh, but I, I will say Sanders, you know, is probably going to be fine. Right. Well, I definitely don't agree there about Sanders, but I mean, it's okay. I, mean, I think I, he's still going to be good for about seventy ish catches in another thousand yard season. Yeah, like like I the overall number, the overall number will look good. It's the it's the when, what week to trust him. Right, That's it'll be problem. a consistency. Issue. I think he's I mean, a flex, year. you know. He, you know, but he's you, you throw him in there as a flex, and you leave him there, you know. If and you know, in the, unless he has a bad, you know, uh, you know, matchup, and, and and that's it, you know. I, again, I mean, just to reiterate, I will not target him. So anybody who's drafting with me, congratulations, you'll get Emmanuel Sanders. Or what were you going to say, Chris? You, you, you were going to say last season something. Oh, yeah, he had 79 catches for 1,032 yards. So even with Simeon in there, he was still serviceable. I mean, he wasn't a guy who you wanted to play, but if you had to play him, it was okay certain weeks. And I think he can be right around that mark again. I'm not thinking he's going to get close to 90 and then 1,200 yards. No, but I th- no. I think in the 70s and a little bit over 1,000 should isn't ridiculous to expect from him again. But yeah. I mean, he, he's going in the he's going in the fifth round right now. Um, that's way yeah. too high to me. That's, I, way, uh, that's way too hot for somebody you don't know when to start, even as a flex option. That's just way too high. That true. could be that could be with the way running backs are going off the field. That could uh, off the board. That could be your wide receiver too. That's gross. Yeah, I mean, you do have guys, you know, on you know, fantasy football calculator. You know, you got Jarvis Landry, Allen Robinson, Stephon Diggs, uh, Dev- uh, Parker. You know, is going there. Uh, All those yeah. guys, I want ahead of Emmanuel Sanders. All those guys. Yeah, I mean, you know, so yeah. 
That, that's why I'm saying. I mean, if 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 Emmanuel Sanders was just inconsistent in having big games, but consistent enough where he got you, you know, uh, ten points a week or something like that, sure. You know, I, I I'd be thrilled to get him as my wide receiver too. But he he can't. You know, some he's weeks he's burnt. High. Right, he's going way too high for me. His value doesn't problem, uh, equal the points. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. Well, where did he Where did he finish last year? Uh, I think he was like twenty. I want to say he was like twenty six. So he was a wide receiver three. Uh, looking oh. at PPR, actually twenty one. Oh, okay, so oh, yeah. even better. I'm looking at the ESPN PPR His standards from last two. year. Yeah, he was a wide receiver too. Uh, Demarius Thomas was also a wide receiver. Too. Some of the guys going around Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, points wise, uh, Terrell Pryor, Tyrell Williams, Richard Matthews, Mike Wallace, Pierre Garcon. So this is a guy who's putting up similar numbers to them. It may be not as consistent as you would want, but he only, he only really crapped your team just a few times last season. Almost every single game was four catches or more. There was what one, right. two, three, four. He missed a game, four games with fewer than four catches. I mean, he still put up some pretty big games for you. And in PPR, I mean, week three, nine catches, you know, I mean, two touchdowns, two, two touchdowns, you know, week 14, 11 catches, you know, week four, eight, seven, week five. So, I mean, I think that you're going to see more of those games from him, you know, and less of the, you know, even if he was giving you those dud games in PPR, you know, that's 10 points, you know, week one, you know, seven points, week two, you know, his, his duds week six was eight. You know, week week nine was nine, you know, almost 10 points, you know, so he's a flex for you. You know, I mean, he's he's and, and when he's going to deliver those high point games, 29 points, you know, 22, 32, you know, so, I mean, he's capable of it. I think he's just one of those guys you, you just leave in your lineup. I think he's safer than than those Allen Robinson, uh, Devontae Parker types. I think Allen Robinson, Devontae Parker has a lot more upside, though. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at on Fantasy Football Calculator, the one I'm looking at is a 12 team PPR, and they have Sanders going as the second pick in the seventh round, which I oh, think that's is fair. pretty great. So, oh, like, yeah. are you, with this news, are you taking, say, Demarius Thomas falls around, Demarius Thomas in the fourth or Emmanuel Sanders in the second? So you mean seventh? Seventh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, don't take him in the second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, don't, don't do that. Don't do yeah, that but, at all. So Thomas in the fourth or Sanders in the seventh? Well, with the injury news, I ain't taken Demarius Thomas at all. And in fact, I, I I definitely see his ADP dropping from the fourth. Yeah, I dropped him down around. Yeah, I mean, well, I I could see his him dropping still. I mean, with the groin, groin injuries, no joke for a receiver, as we mentioned about. I mean, about other players who suffered groin injuries and you know missing significant time or or you know uh, significantly becoming, uh, you know, worse on the field like Jeremy Macklin last season. Um, so I'm, uh, you know, I guess I would have to draft Emmanuel Sanders, though, I mean, in the seventh. If you had to draft today, and what round would you take Demarius Thomas in with what we know? I'm going to take him in round, I'm going to take him in round five. Because um, I, I still think that he's a red zone threat. Um, he's got high touchdown potential, and I think that even if he has injuries, uh, I think he can go out there and still be a red zone threat. So yeah. I, I think when he's healthy, he's he's going to be really good for you, and I think you're going to be stealing at that point. You might be feeling like you're taking him early, but you look at the guys behind him. He just he he his his potential is way above those guys. Yeah, and it's very possible since this was preseason that it's just a slight groin pull that's really nothing to be concerned about right. by the time the season starts. So if you're drafting and people are hearing this news and freaking out because people freak out about the preseason all the time, right. Right. and Demaris Thomas is there in the fifth, I think that is awesome. Yeah, there you go. I mean, I, Nick doesn't. I, 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 Nick no, doesn't I'm sorry. I, I don't. You know, you, you're talking about Trevor Simeon throwing the ball. Yeah, what I was yeah, asking you was what round. Sure. I was asking he, what round would it have to be for you to I take mean, for Thomas? me, for me, okay, for me, uh, give me Demarius Thomas in the seventh. And okay. that, that's and that's unrealistic though. That's that's why I'm saying that because I I just 
you know, I'm, I just, there are just guys that I like better and will probably like better in, every, in each round when Demarius Thomas names come, comes up with them. I'll be like, no, I'll take the other guy. Sneed or, or Thomas? I'll take Sneed. Watkins I, or Thomas? I, I'll take Watkins. I like the upside there. Wow. Gar, uh, Crowder or, or, or Thomas? In a PPR, give me Crowder all day. Wow. Wow. Um, <laughs> Garcon I'm, I'm or, 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 or Thomas? I'm taking I, Thomas I, over all those guys. Yeah, me too. I mean, I'm sorry. That's just how down I am on the on the Broncos and, and their inconsistency. I mean, interesting. Oh, that's know, strong. I, mean, I know, I know it is, and maybe I'm dead wrong on this one, but that's just the way I feel. Well, I mean, you're talking, right. you're talking about consistency. There were only I'm looking at his stats from last year. There were only three games in which he was very consistent. Thomas, yeah, only three games in which he had less than five catches. He was pretty great. He was, right. he was the I, more consistent out of the two receivers. Um, for me, you know. I like I like consistent home runs. I guess maybe I aim too high. I mean, but what do you want? I mean, it's fantasy football. I mean, you're not going to get that every round, you know. And in the fifth no, round, no, of course you're not going to get that every round. I mean, I just it's just amazing to me for Demarius Thomas. I suppose like what he used to be and now what he is. Well, yeah, but I he's mean, got seven injuries, injuries, not Peyton Manning. Well, I know that, Peyton that also. <laughs> that's I mean, come right. on. It, well, I understand that, but I don't. Know, maybe I'm being a little too much on on the Mary. Maybe maybe I would take the Marius Thomas over Crowder mm-hmm. more than I think about it or something. I don't trivia know. here. Where do you think we're talking about catches? Where do you think Demarius Thomas ranked last year? <sighs> because you're giving me this as a trivia question, I'm sure he finished higher than I would have initially thought. So I don't know in the top ten. Who's you got to guess? Uh. I'd probably say, yeah, maybe like top 12. Yeah, he finished as number 12. He had more catches than Crabtree, more than Julio, more than Amari Cooper, um, more than Brandon Cooks. And these are all guys who finished ahead of him. He had more catches than these guys. So the guy is consistent for PPR. Yeah. I mean, he, he was, he's definitely consistent. And, and I think um, if, if people are going to fade him, uh, I think – that could be a good, you know, thing for you. I mean, if, if you're there in the middle of the round, right, you're in like six or seven, and guys are kind of, you know, falling, you know, it's 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 a good guy. You know, you see him just, you know, coming down to you, and, and you know, you, you might just have to snatch him up, you know, and and that's a good value there. I think fifth, you know, you know, even even late four, you know, like for me, I I, I think it's still fine. I mean. So, you know, I'm looking at – I'm pulling up the stats now in front of my face. And, I mean, they're not bad numbers. I do suppose they are better. But there's there's some numbers that I'm just not – I don't know. I'm not a fan of. I mean, I guess if I can get him – boy, it burned you, though, in your damn playoffs. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, in the championship, in week 15, yeah. he had seven for 91. Right. Right. So he he got you to the playoffs. He didn't help you out in the championship. I mean, he, I mean, you were counting on him to be a wide receiver one anyway. All right. I guess my stance is a little off on him. I'll, I'll admit when I'm wrong. I'll admit when I'm wrong. All right. Wait, so when have you ever done that? <laughs> uh, I know when to admit I'm wrong. I'm here on first rare time occasions. Here. First Thank time you. on the Sleeper Wire Ooh. show. Is this episode two hundred? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I mean, but now that he's in, but now that he's injured, though, I don't want any part of it. That's all I'm gonna tell you. It all just right. moves him. I take him in the fifth instead of the third. Yeah. I'll take him tonight. Then I'll take him. We're, we're drafting tonight. I I will gladly take him at the end of the fourth round. <laughs> Go for I, it. I hope we're drafting next to each other. Actually, you know what? <laughs> yeah, right. I hope we're not. <laughs> oh, God, I hope we're not. I, That'd be the worst. Oh my God. We did that last season. Oh my I God. It. it was the worst. Yeah. All right, Every guys. time. Let's, <laughs> let's let's wrap up the news because we got to give people their draft tips, and we don't have a lot more time. So I'm just going to run through this couple of things. Uh, you know, two bad quarterbacks on two well, two bad teams with two bad quarterback situations. Maybe one will, you know, get better. The uh, Cleveland Browns getting to show Kaiser as their number one quarterback, while the Jets. Have Josh McCown and really I'm not surprised at the McCown news. Deshaun Kaiser, I still thought Kessler was going to hold on to it, but it, I guess it's good that they're giving the rookie the starting job. 
But you know, it's neither one of them's fantasy relevant at all. Barely, probably not even in two quarterback leagues. Oh boy, you should have been in the two quarterback league. I was. In, I drafted it last night because man, people just went quarterback crazy. I mean, some teams had four quarterbacks. And I mean, just, you kind of need. You, you kind of. I mean, you need at least three. Right. Which is fine. I mean, but I ended up with Cam Newton, Eli Manning, and Jared Goff as my quarterbacks because of how just I. I mean, I, I I had to. I hated it though because it was such big quarterback run. I had to grab a quarterback in the third, and Cam Newton was the best one left. Oh yeah, I mean, you, you absolutely have to if you're waiting. And we will get into that. So I guess we'll go on to the news because right. we'll surely get into that. Right. Okay, so let's open it up. So, yeah, like I said, two, two QB league last night. Uh, it was a 10-teamer. Um, you know, it was, two, it was two quarterback, two, you know, running back, two receiver, and two flex. Uh, no defenses or kickers, which was nice. Um, you know, but seven bed spots. So, it was, it was an, it's an interesting, you know, half-point PPR, four points per passing touchdown league. Um, which that was like a little, eh. but that's why I'm excited that I got Cam Newton. Cause if he stays healthy, I mean, with his ground game, that'll help add, add some extra, extra points to him. Right. Um, you know, and then I like Eli just cause I like the weapons around him this season, but I really had to reach for quarterback at, at spots. I just never imagined that I would reach for quarterbacks. And there were some people doing some weird things too. I mean, there's one guy who took. He didn't take a running back until like the twelfth round, and he was pretty silly. I mean, he took like uh, how many uh, rounds w- uh, were there? Uh, Sixteen. Jeez. Yeah, and he took and he took his running backs like he took all the Patriots like backfield: James White, Deion Lewis, and Rex Burkhead. Well, I mean, one of those guys will pop um, unless it is Gillisley. And my thought you know, is the the only star. reason my thought is the only reason he did that. Is just a trade because he has a lot of wide receiver depth and he's got three of the, you know, probably top 12 quarterbacks on his team. So he's just, he had to have done what he did to just try to get trades out of people. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge mistake. I will say if you're, if you're doing a two quarterback league, um, you're, you know, what super flex, whatever, uh, I, I think you're, you definitely want to draft running back early, um, and then get your quarterbacks round three, round four. I think that's my favorite way to do it. Um, I know a lot of guys like to grab quarterbacks in the first round, which is fine, you know. Um, but it, it's still a lot of guys out there. I'm going to give you my team real quick, just for a basis. So uh, Cam Newton, Eli, as I mentioned, my starters, Melvin Gordon, Kareem Hunt, Jordy Nelson, DeAndre Hopkins. I took Gronk. LeGarrette Blunt, Hunter Henry, or who I have in my flex at the moment. And then on my bench, I have Doug Martin, grabbed Kevin White with my last pick in the draft, Jared Goff, Jeremy Macklin, Cooper okay. Cup, Chris Carson, I also drafted towards the end of the draft from Seattle, and uh, Eric Decker. But anyway, so that that's like that was my team in this league. And I feel pretty good about it. I think it's a pretty well rounded team. Um, but like I said, I mean quarterback run happened. In the in the third round, I'm mean, uh, in the third round. Actually, I'm looking at it now. I'm looking at the draft board because this was done on Sleeperbot. And the first quarterback was taken in the beginning of the third round with Aaron Rodgers, and then Tom Brady. And then the fourth round is where the run really began, like Matt Ryan, Russell Wilson, Drew Brees. And fifth round, it was just craziness. I mean, it got to me. There were before I picked again in the fifth round because I was picking at the eighth uh, eighth spot. Um, there was Five quarterbacks taken right before I had to go. And I was like, damn, I'm going to have to take a quarterback here. So, yeah, it was actually Time the to pull the trigger. Time to pull yeah, the trigger. fifth round. I mean, which isn't bad to take Cam Newton, at least. I mean, it's not the no, not safest of options. But hopefully he has a bounce back year, uh, comes back strong. And then, like I said, in the seventh, and then the seventh I took Eli. So when you see a quarterback run like this uh chris let's hear from you first when you see a quarterback run like this in a 2 qb league what what's your reaction first say in the third round for example well this is the perfect example of 
player draft because we always advocate taking quarterbacks late and you can even usually wait in two quarterback leagues until the fifth or sixth round to take them but you always have to be able to adapt and this is a great example of that because if it's a 10 team league you have to have three quarterbacks in two quarterback league right and you really want all of all three of them to have three different bye weeks because if you have two of them on the same bye week, then you're kind of screwed for that week. Right. So you have to have three. So if you're is say it's a ten team league, and then in the first three rounds before you pick nine go off the board, you have to take one. And if you don't, you're going to be stuck with Jared Goff and Trevor Simeon and you know Tom Savage as your three quarterbacks, and Oof. that's just awful. So you want at least in a two quarterback league. I want at least one of the top six or seven guys. At least one. Yeah, but I mean, we, we don't really know who that is. And I think we have a good idea who could fit in there. So I think for me, I look at it more as I want a top 12 guy because I just don't know who's going to be, you know, one of those guys unless I'm grabbing Rogers, Breeze, you know, you know, you know, Brady. Uh, other than that, there's no surety. You know, I mean, Luck, he, he might miss a week or two. He's still going to be a top 10 guy. I really like, you know, him late because he's falling. Um, you know, so, yeah, I definitely want two top 10, you know, two two top 12, two top 10, you know, depending what kind of size of league you're in. I definitely agree with Chris there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you definitely need to grab three quarterbacks. Don't kid yourself. Um, you know, definitely draft, draft a top 12 guy, uh, you know, for sure as your first quarterback, try to get two of the top 12 guys if you can, but don't try to push yourself into getting one just to grab one. Um, you know, but again, like, like, like was mentioned, I mean, you don't want three freaking scrubs as your starting quarterback. No. You don't want to be stuck with Blake Bortles and Trevor Simeon and, uh, you know, Josh McCown. <laughs> you, 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 you won't win a game. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 awfully ugly. I mean, you, you're gonna be banking on being extremely top heavy, I guess. You know, you went, you know, say you grabbed, um, you know, Murray and and like Howard, and then you you followed it up with you know w- you know with two receivers, you got Crabtree and, uh, and and maybe Hopkins or something. Uh, but yeah, I mean, those guys are just gonna be what, 15 to 18 points, hopefully, you know? Um, yeah, that's, that's definitely not what you want in, in, in a super flex. All right, guys. So let's talk about some of the deeper leagues, like the 16-teamers, like these big, these big, uh, you know, heavy amount of people draft and type leagues. Um, you know, you're going to miss – if you're picking in, like, the 16th spot, boy, I mean, are you missing a lot of, out on a lot of talent? Like – uh, I have never been in one of these kind of leagues before. I'm not really a fan of them personally. Have you guys haven't had any experience in these types of leagues? You know, I've done. I've never been in a le- season log league with these, but I've done some mocks. And the thing I've come to realize is that with these huge leagues, when we're talking like 16 team leagues, it is more important than ever to make sure you get a stud running back. There's so much depth at the wide receiver position. You really need a stud running back in the first round or two if you want to have any chance at all in a 16-team league. Yeah, um, I I agree. I mean, you just – you know, I don't don't have a lot to add for the 16-team leagues personally. Uh, Who's do you have anything to add? I feel like uh, when when you're in these, you know, super deep team leagues, you you just need – you know, more starting guys, you know, guys that are going to offer you a difference in whatever way. Um, yes, you know, running back is going to be a great help, but say you waited um, and you don't end up with one of those, you know, those those top 10, you know, guys and, and you're at 16 or 14, you're picking there, you know, you, you could still pick, you know, one of those RB2 guys, um, and, and still, you know, fill your team out, you know, pretty nicely. You, you get other guys that are going to have a presence, you know, guys like Jeremy Hill late, you know, you know, he's going to have a, you know, scoring role, you know, uh, Robert Turbin's, you know, possibly going to have another scoring role, you know, and you could use those guys, you know, if, if it's a deep, uh, 
you know, flex league, or even if it's not, I mean, everyone's going to kind of be scarce. You know, you're probably going to have to use these guys. So you want guys that are going to have an opportunity, some sort of a role, you know, passing down roles, some sort of role. You don't want to just have a guy that uh, may have an opportunity because you're going to end up dropping those guys and <laughs> and someone else is going to take them later. So I, I will say with those deeper, you know, leagues, you want more guys that, you know, have more defined roles. As we've mentioned on the show, half point PPR, full point PPR, uh, you know, there's just certain guys you know you're going to have to target, like these passing, uh, you know, pass catching running backs are so much more important, such an emphasis on wide receivers, you know, I mean, you've heard it all, I mean, I'm sure at this point, if you listen to our show, you know, how to, how to do PPR in standard leagues. Um, what about uh, FAB, like, do you know, auction leagues? Um, you know, there's so many different ways to do them. I've seen normally it's about a $200 spending limit, uh, for your salary. Uh, you know, some do with keepers, some do, don't do it with keepers. It's just, uh, you know, just a redraft. Um, Coos, have you ever done an auction league before? Yeah, I've, I've done a couple. Um, they're super fun. They're probably the most fun leagues to be in. Um, just, you know, just as far as the initial, you know, standpoint of, you know, you get who you want, <laughs> you know, you want to overpay for a guy, he's going to be on your team. I really like the approach to kind of get all the running backs, you know, out there, you know, and, and, and have guys spend most of their money because that's where they're going to spend most of their money on, um, most of the running backs and kind of just take those cusp, you know, guys, I, you know, I, I like to have at least one you know, top 10 guy, you know, you know, potentially. Um, Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the rest, you know, just kind of fill it out with guys, you know, with, you know, you know, a couple bucks, you know, you could get like a, like a Mark Ingram for, you know, for maybe about like eight or nine bucks, you know, I'd I'd rather, you know, fill my team out with guys like that. So I have nice depth and I'm, you know, I'm not so top heavy. You know, I don't really have a whole lot of experience with auction leagues, so I'm not going to, uh, sit here and <laughs> give you definitive answers on this. The one thing that I do know is that if you want one of those top guys, say you, you, you want David Johnson or you want Bell, or you want Brown or so on, you need to be prepared to spend 40% of your budget on him. The, that's really the good thing about auction leagues is that it makes it fair. Everybody has a chance at David Johnson, not just the first pick in the draft. Everybody has a chance to get David Johnson, but yeah. you're just going to have to pay a lot for those premier guys. And if you right. want two of them, then you're basically banking your entire season on two studs who you're hoping do not get injured. Cause if they do, then you're screwed. I mean, I saw this one uh, question up on Superbot under our uh, Sleepwire channel. He said that he had two keepers in Odo Beckham and AJ Green. Both uh, were $60 and $40. And he says, uh, you know, how much did I try to spend on David Johnson and Le'Veon Bell? And I'm like, whoa, like and he said two hundred dollar budget. I'm like, first off, you already have two guys that you're you're keeping for a hundred dollars. So you have a hundred dollars left. I mean, you know what, you're gonna get one you know, possibly get one of these running backs and then spend dollars on the rest of your position uh positions. I'm like I don't know if I would do that. I mean right. anybody else think that's crazy? No, yeah, I mean that's exactly what I was talking about. I mean, that's a great way to get yourself, you know, in, you know, the bottom of the 12, (laughs) you know, it's a great way to miss the playoffs. You know, um, you know, it's, you know, you you sit there and and you want those guys and they look great and you can roster bait to the high heavens, (laughs) you know, it's great, but it's at the end of the day, you you have no depth, you know, if, if you're hoping, you're banking, you're wishing that these guys stay healthy all season. All right, guys, I'm sad to say that we are, out of time. No! I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's been so much fun. We've covered so much news. We got a little bit into the draft tip. You know, I helped you guys with some of those funky, weird leaks that, you know, not everybody is in, but hopefully we helped you out a little bit here. And, uh, you know, you guys can always reach out to us on Twitter at Sleepwire Show. Uh, you can reach out to me personally at Sleepwire Nick. Chris, where can they reach you? 
You can find me on SleeperBot at Professor Chris, on Twitter at Seymour SleeperWire, and then on Fantasy Life at Professor Chris as well. Can, they can reach me. No, I'm Who's the Prophet on Twitter. I'm Who's the Prophet on Fantasy Life app, and I'm uh, Prophet Who's on uh, SleeperBot. Yep, and you can find me, as I mentioned, Twitter at Sleepwire Nick, on Fantasy Life at Sleepwire Nick, and on Sleeperbot at SW Nick. You can find all our rankings, articles, and a lot more at sleeperwire.com. And please, guys, as we always tell you every episode, we do this for our friend Rob. Uh, you have to go to his gofundme.com slash Rob JR page to learn so much more or just sleepwire.com. We have plenty of information there on how you can help him overcome his chronic Lyme disease. So please guys go there and help him out. It's, you know, he's a great guy. He needs your help. Boosh, Chris, you guys are the best. Have I ever told uh, you that before? You're the best. You're the best. No. You're we, the best. We're the best, and we have fine asses? Come on, man. Oh, You're going to make me blush. All in one oh, episode, man. and me admitting I'm wrong. I mean, this is like the coup de grace of all episodes. Ah, <laughs> so great. So great. For who said Chris, I'm Nick Sumrall saying so long, everybody. Good night. Peace. Wire, the only fantasy football radio show with more than a dozen multi time, multi league, multi year champions. Listen to the Sleeper Wire show every Friday, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern on Dash Talk.